Zanka stood by the glass wall of his office, the lights to his room off, the only source of light with the twinkling buildings of the city. He took a sip of his wine, his eyes unfocused as they remained on the nearest billboard on one of the buildings opposite to his. It was almost midnight. The whole staff had returned home by now. He stayed there as he waited and once the door opened, he turned around. His guard, Jeha, dragged in a beaten up man, holding him by his hair. The man whimpered in pain, having no energy to put up a fight anymore. Jeha, he won't speak a word, he said as he threw the man on the floor and stood back with his hands joined behind his back. Junko walked towards his table, his face toyed as he picked up a blade, casually twirling it around his fingers. Will you hear dirtying my office? He said as he stopped before the beaten up man. Jungkook, I just need the name. The more time you take, the more you bleed. The more my office gets dirty, the more it is painful. He dropped the wine glass on top of his head. The glass shattering, a few pieces digging in his skin and the alcohol spinning on the wounds drying piercing skins out of him. It was going to be a long night. On the other hand, Wine was sitting on the couch hugging her knees. She was still upset at how her fiancé, Rowan, talked to her last night. They were in an arranged relationship set by their parents, but both were trying to understand each other to make it better. The two always tried to treat each other with respect. They hardly met once or twice over a dinner per month to know each other well. She moved in with him last week over their parents' request to be able to spend more time with each other as their wedding was nearing. The week went busy as usual. The two were busy with their work and Wyan had to unpack her stuff too. She refused to work in her father's company and was currently working somewhere else. Last night, they finally got to spend time with each other. Wine made Rowan dinner, but once he returned home, he was drunk. He told her he drank because he was happy that they were going to marry. She felt weird but decided to let it go. The two had dinner and Rowan suddenly started shouting at Wine for being careless about spinning a drink all over his suit. Regardless of how many times she apologized, he still treated her with such harsh and rude manners. The next morning, he apologized for his behavior, saying he was drunk and this won't repeat. When Rowan came home that night, she stayed there on the couch, he looked at her and sighed and stepped near her. Rowan, are you still mad because of last night? I said I am sorry. Wine, I am not mad. Rowan, then what's with your grumpy mood? He said irritated, taking his coat off. Wine. I'm fine, I said. Rowan, alright, let's have dinner. Wine, I didn't prepare it, you can order. She said and looked away, not in the mood to talk to him just yet. Rowan clenched his jaw, already irritated over work and at her attitude. Rowan, if you stayed at home, you could have at least prepared food or ordered it before I return. What's wrong with you? Wine, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with you? Why are you picking up fire with me on everything I say? Rowan, or you could fix your damn attitude and we'll be all good. Wine, you know what? Never mind. She said as she stood up. I want to be alone. Give me some space. I'm not in the mood to talk to you. She was about to go to her room but Rowan grabbed her wrist. Rowan, oh, now you want some space? How about you have as much as you want? He started dragging her out. His grip was so tight, she winced because of pain. Rowan, you're hurting me. Let me go. Rowan, I'm letting you go. He opened the main door to his home and kicked her out. Rowan, come back when your head is back in its place. 
he said and slammed the door shut on her face. She stayed stick to her spot for a few minutes, unable to comprehend what just happened. Her hands turning into fists as they started shaking with anxiety and eyes roaming around the area in case anyone had witnessed the humiliation. She didn't even have the phone with her, couldn't go back to her parents' home knowing they will bombard her with questions. She sighed and decided to return to her company where she worked. Maybe she could spend the night in her office. She couldn't sleep on that office chair and hard wooden table no matter how much she tried. It had been an hour. She simply decided to rest till the night passes by and she could return to her home the next morning. A knock on her office door took her attention. She looked at the time. It was 2.15 a.m. She thought everyone had left the office by 5 p.m. or maximum 8 p.m. The door opened and her eyes widened up as she got off the chair and bowed instantly to the CEO of the company. Wine. Sir, please come in. Jungkook took a look around before his eyes fell back on Wine and the car hanging down her neck. He didn't know each employee working there. It was his first time seeing her. Jungkook. Miss Wan, care to explain what you are doing at this hour? He stepped inside the room, looking as composed as ever, even after the torture session he had in his office. Something about this girl took his attention. The way she scratched the back of her neck, eyes and focus looking for an excuse, pink flushed lips inviting him to kiss the hell out of her. He, regardless of his wild fantasies, remained on his spot. Wine, I was working. I just didn't realize when I slept. Jungkook, I'm sure all the rooms are checked by the security by 11 p.m. He leaned against the wall, crossing his arms over his puffed up chest. Wine cursed under her breath for such a lame excuse. It was so sudden she couldn't think of anything else. Jungkook, now, how about you be honest and tell me what is going on? Wine, I just, I couldn't return home for some reason tonight, so I decided to stay here. I'm sorry for misusing this place. She looked down, joining her hands in front of her. Her every move only lit a fire inside Jungkook to hold her close to him. She looked so fragile and he wished to break her but protect her innocence at the same time. Jungkook, follow me. He walked out just like that and Wine had no option other than doing as she was told. She couldn't lose this job, not when she almost lost her home. So, when Jungkook held the door of his car open for her, she had to rethink her priorities. Wine, where are we going? Jungkook, do you need a place to sleep or not? Wine, that's fine, I'll find another place. Jungkook. Get in this van. She gulped and got in the car. It was her first time meeting her boss. She didn't know a word about him. And as intimidating as he looked, she knew it was the worst idea getting in his car unprotected. Jungkook got in as well and his driver took off to his home. I'm taking you home. You can stay in the guest room. But make sure you have a place to sleep. I don't want my workers to make mistakes because they couldn't sleep well at night. He lied. An excuse. He simply wanted to keep her with him and know her more. The sudden interest in her was taking over his every other need. She sat in her seat quietly, hands on her knees, fingers tapping out of anxiety. Was she supposed to believe him? Jungkook couldn't have enough of her. His eyes took in her every move. Oh, you're going to drive me insane. Now I want you filled with sin. That is me. To be continued.